can easily make over 500 wheel horsepower with just five basic bolt-on modifications. Hey everyone, Jake from 8020 Automotive here. Today we are talking about performance modifications and upgrades for the Audi TT RS. The Audi TT RS comes with a turbocharged 2.5 liter engine that is very tuner friendly and can easily make over 500 wheel horsepower with just five basic bolt-on modifications. First, let's go ahead and talk about the differences in generations between the TTRS. The TTRS was not a trim that was available in the first generation of the Audi TT series. And so we have two generations of the TTRS with the first one being the 8J platform and the second one being the 8S platform. The newest generation uses the same 2.5 liter turbocharged platform that the second generation Audi TT RS used. However, the engine went through a number of upgrades for the third generation 8S TT RS. So the third generation can produce a decent bit more power and has more power potential than the second generation. In this video, I'm gonna talk about power limits and horsepower gains, and that's gonna be specific to the newest 8S platform but this list of modifications is gonna be nearly identical for the second generation 8J TTRS. The caveats here that the 8J engines have a little bit more limitations from a fuel supply because they only use direct injection, whereas the 8S models have direct and port injection. And it is a very different engine structure in that these were previously cast iron blocks and then we switched over to an aluminum block for the 8S models. There are a lot of differences that impact power potential. And so the second generation 8Js can handle a little bit less power than the newer versions can. With the 8Js, we're probably looking at about 450 wheel horsepower on pump gas. With E85, you can get up to about 500 wheel horsepower, but that is going to require some fueling upgrades that the 8Ss won't need. And that's really the main gist here is we're probably looking about a 50 wheel horsepower difference between the two, main limitations being from a fueling standpoint and from the factory turbocharger. With that being said, these five bolt-on modifications are gonna be the same for both engines. You just need to have different power expectations because these second generations can't produce quite as much power. So with that being said, let's go ahead and talk about the power limitations of the 8S model. These engines can handle six to 650 wheel horsepower, but the primary limitation is from a torque standpoint. And so torque management is extremely important on these engines. The generally considered safe torque limit is about 550 wheel torque to ensure reliability and to prevent anything like bent rods or issues with your pistons it's safe to keep torque in the 500 to 550 range but you really don't want to go anywhere past that so tuning is extremely important and then from another power limitation on here the factory turbocharger can get right up to about 550 wheel horsepower beyond that you're going to need a turbocharger upgrade and then you're also going to start to need to look at additional fueling upgrades once you upgrade the turbocharger as well. Ultimately, that's gonna get a lot more expensive, but also that's gonna put you well past the power potential of this engine. So with just these basic bolt-on modifications, you can get right up to the safe limit of the internals. So there really isn't a need to go for an upgraded turbo and fueling upgrades, unless you plan on upgrading your connecting rods and your pistons to be able to support more than the 600 to 650 wheel horsepower and 500 to 550 wheel torque. With that being said, let's go ahead and talk about the five performance modifications. Number one is going to be engine tuning. Engine tuning is going to be the building blocks of all these other modifications. What that's going to do is turn up the boost on the turbocharger, and that's where really 90 plus percent of the power gains we're talking about are coming from. So all of these other modifications are really to help support the tuning and help support the higher boost pressures that the turbocharger is now producing. Tuning itself can bring you right up to the power limits of this engine. And like I mentioned, tuning is extremely important because of the torque limitation. So working with either a reputable tuner or a reputable plug and play software is extremely important to make sure you're staying well within the torque limits of this engine. Second modification on our list is going to be a cold air intake. Now that we're producing higher boost pressures, it's important to supply the turbocharger with more air just to help improve its efficiency and to help it do its job just a little bit easier. A cold air intake isn't going to be crazy from a power gain standpoint. You'll likely see five to 10 wheel horsepower improvements. In addition to the power gains, you're also going to get 
better throttle response, faster turbo spool, and some small fuel economy improvements. Third on our list is gonna be downpipes. The factory downpipe houses the catalytic converter and it mounts up directly to the turbocharger and so back pressure builds up within the downpipe and then that acts as a force against the turbocharger and actually slows down turbo spool and produces a lot more heat. So by upgrading the downpipe either to a catless downpipe or a high flow downpipe, we reduce all that back pressure within the exhaust system that helps the turbocharger spool more freely and it results in a lot less heat being produced from the turbocharger. So we get great performance gains and reliability improvements from this as well. That leads us into our fourth modification here, which is an upgraded intercooler. Realistically, an upgraded intercooler should probably be the second thing that you do after tuning because on these 2.5 liter engines, the factory intercooler is extremely small. And what happens once we start producing more boost from the turbocharger So we start producing a lot more heat. And so we need an adequate intercooler to be able to cool down all of that charge air before it passes back into the engine. So it's extremely important to have a good intercooler that can cool down all the charge air so we can keep our intake air temps and our engine temperatures low. So an intercooler is good for performance, but honestly, it's the most most important thing for reliability and because of how bad the factory intercooler is on these TTRS's I'd recommend doing that second after tuning just because tuning and higher boost pressures puts a lot of additional stress on the small factory intercooler and then fifth on our list is going to be the turbo inlet pipe the turbo inlet is another restrictive part of the intake system by reducing that restriction we're able to supply additional air to the turbocharger which again just helps it do its job more efficiently and gives you a number of those other benefits like throttle response and turbo spool. And so the inlet itself is good for over 10 wheel horsepower, so it's definitely a worthwhile modification, and it just helps support the tuning and support the turbocharger like we discussed earlier. So that's really it for our five bolt-on modifications here. Like I mentioned, these are gonna be the same for the 8J as well as for the 8S, but the one thing that we haven't addressed here is fueling. And so if you're just running standard pump gas on an 8J, these modifications probably put you at about 450 wheel horsepower and on an 8s third gen they probably put you around 500 wheel horsepower so the next step to get that 450 to 500 and to get our 500 to 550 is going to be e85 fueling the 8j's cannot handle running 100 e85 on the factory fueling system because it is only direct injected and so that will require some fueling upgrades but because the 8S has both direct and port injection, the factory fueling system can handle 100% E85. So just by filling up your gas tank with different gas and properly tuning for it, you can get an extra about 50 wheel horsepower out of these engines. And the most important thing with running E85 fueling is making sure you're tuned properly for it because it cannot run the same tune as pump gas because of the differences with E85 and its octane rating. So that's gonna be the last key ingredient to be able to get that extra 50 wheel horsepower out of these engines. On both these engines, that'll put you right up against the safe limits. And so that's about the best you could do with just basic bolt-ons. Once we start talking about going further is when we need to start talking about connecting rods, pistons, and other internal upgrades to be able to support additional power. And that's when we start then having to look at turbochargers, fueling upgrades, internals. Now we're looking at a very expensive build. And so unless you're trying to push these engines to crazy limits, I'd recommend sticking with these basic bolt-on modifications, get a good tune, and enjoy the big power gains that you get out of it. That wraps up our video on modifications for the Audi TT RS. If you guys appreciate this video, please click that like button, subscribe to our channel, and stay tuned for all of our future Audi and Volkswagen content.